Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and today I am at the Copart location in Indianapolis. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the Fusion. I'll be working on it later today. But as I get close to completing the work on the Fusion and getting that car back on the road, it's time to be looking for the next build. In Indiana, I actually would have to use a broker to purchase a salvage car. But the Indianapolis location is so close to my home, this gives me an opportunity to actually check out a vehicle in person. I bought the Fusion sight on scene in Dayton, and I think I got lucky in a lot of ways. But I'm looking to purchase a vehicle here in Indiana through a broker so that I can actually lay eyes on it. So I'm going to go in and get checked in, and then I'm going to go walk out on the lot and take a look at a few vehicles. Why don't you come along with me? <music> All right, I've been out here for 10 or 15 minutes trying to figure out the lay of the land, figure out how cars are placed out here while simultaneously not getting run over by a fork truck. So, I um, was able to find one of the cars I was looking at and uh, now I'm gonna walk around and look at a few more and uh, bring you along with me. All right, I'm heading out. Sorry I couldn't show you more of that. Um, I don't think they're real keen on cameras out on the lot, but uh, I walked around for about an hour and a half looking at cars. Uh, some of them I planned to look at before I came in. Uh, others I just saw and thought, hey, that looks kind of nice, let's take a look. So uh, we'll see if any of these turn into a purchase, but it was uh, really cool to walk around on the lot. Um, kind of creepy in some ways, all these cars just sitting there wrecked some of them in really bad shape a few nice ones out there too anyway hope to bring you along on another trip to copart sometime but it is time for me to get back to the house and get back to the work on the fusion all right i'm back from copart and i'm ready to get working on the fusion uh, today my plan is to finish bleeding the power steering and the cooling systems and uh, get all of the engine stuff kind of buttoned up. Then I'm going to get um, everything ready for uh, the airbag system. I'm gonna fix the uh, broken wiring for the front crash sensor. I'm going to fix the wiring for the passenger side airbag and get the airbag installed. And then uh, then I'll be ready to actually install the SRS module and the seat belts. That stuff has come back from myairbags.com. I'll show you how all that uh, works, getting that stuff back from them. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this other stuff taken care of. Let's go ahead and get started. installed transmission fluid topped off power steering sounds fantastic no more whining everything's nice and smooth as butter just like it should be fantastic thankfully that means I do not have to uh, replace the power steering pump after the last video when I had worked on the power steering it was sounding very unhappy I did a little bit of research and several of you also commented in the comments hey you probably just need to bleed the power steering system 
you know, I'd never done that before, so that's one of those things that I'm learning in this uh, project. Uh, but uh, yes, power steering does need to be bled when the whole system is drained like mine was. So uh, most of you probably already knew that. That was a lesson learned for me. Anyway, it's great now, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, fixing the wiring for my crash sensor and then the wiring for the passenger airbag go ahead and uh, solder everything back together in preparation for putting my whole SRS system back together with the module and the seat belts and the airbags. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I went ahead and soldered my crash sensor, which is right here, the wires right back together. Uh, these got uh, pinched in the accident and actually got cut in the accident. So they're soldered back together. I'll go ahead and put the loom back on them so that they're protected. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do any soldering. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that will show you uh, far better than I could show you how to solder. Uh, Chris Fix has a really good one. I'll try to remember to uh, leave a link to his video in the description. Uh, but these wires are now repaired. So while I've got my soldering things out, I'm going to go ahead and repair uh, the wiring for the passenger airbag inside the car. This is some of the coldest soldering I've ever done. My hands are numb. It's in the 20s right now. Hopefully in the car it will be a little bit warmer. Let's get in there. All right, a little difficult to show you what I'm doing in here, but I'm getting ready to uh, solder up the replacement wire harnesses for the passenger side airbag. I uh, had to cut the old ones off because they were melted uh, in the accident. So I have these genuine Motorcraft uh, replacement connectors, um, one for each side, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and wire them up and, uh, and do it the same way. Um, it should go without saying that if you're going to be soldering inside a car, make sure that it's well ventilated. The fumes coming off of that are noxious. So I have this passenger side door open. I also have the window on the driver's side uh, part way open. There's plenty of ventilation. Um, but I definitely would recommend that you never try to do this in a uh, tightly closed off car. Uh, you're going to make yourself sick. It could hurt you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. got the front crash sensor wiring repaired as well as the front passenger airbag wiring repaired. I'm going to have to knock off here for tonight because I'm just about out of light. I'll pick up tomorrow putting the new airbags in and as well as installing my SRS module and my seat belts. I'll check in with you then. All right, it's a couple of days later. It is freezing cold, but I'm going to go ahead and get the seat belt and airbag system all buttoned up. I'm going to start by installing the seat belts. Then I'm going to install the front passenger airbag. I've already installed, um, a few weeks ago, I installed the driver's steering wheel airbag. And then once I've got all the airbags and seat belts and everything hooked back up uh, the way they should be, then the last thing I'll do is go ahead and uh, plug the, uh, the SRS module back in. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that, and then theoretically that whole system should be done and fixed, and my airbag light on the dash should be gone. The only question I kind of still have in my mind is I'm still reusing um, the front crash sensor from the car, the, the original one that came with the car. Um, it doesn't look damaged to me, but I'm going to try it. If I still get some sort of a code for that, I do have a replacement that I pulled off a car at a salvage yard. Uh, but I'm hoping that I can just run with the one that came with the car. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I'll check back in with you soon. Be 
you see how nice they cleaned up these seat belts. They didn't just fix the internals, they actually cleaned the, the straps themselves. That's really quite nice. Didn't know they did that, but that's a really nice perk. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and install the passenger side dash airbag. Um, some newer cars, if the uh, airbag deploys, the passenger airbag deploys, uh, requires replacing the entire dash. Um, my primary driver, I have a Subaru Outback, it is that way. If my passenger airbag went off, uh, if I was rebuilding that car, I would have to replace the whole dash to do that. This car, thankfully, old school car, it just is a separate unit, and it just plugs in and screws down inside there, and uh, so thankfully that makes this a lot easier and a lot cheaper to do. So uh, to put the bolts into the bottom of this airbag, I actually have to uh, take the glove box off. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Well, that was awkward, but it's in. Um, my dash has one of the same problems that most of these cars of this era have, and that's that the, uh, the actual dash pad itself is actually bubbling up a little bit where the foam separates from the metal structure. So I'm gonna go back and uh, after the fact and uh, try to seal that down a little bit, and then the, everything will seat a little bit better. But uh, the airbag is physically installed. There are two bolts underneath there. Um, they're awkward to get to but it's literally just two 10 millimeter bolts. So uh, if you can get past the awkwardness, or maybe if you're a little smaller than me, <laughs> uh, you can get in there and you can get those bolted down. I had to put uh, a couple of extensions on my wrench to get to it, um, but it's in there. Even though it doesn't look pretty up top, it is secure and safe. Um, just take your time when you're putting it in, make sure your wires don't get pinched, to make sure everything lines up properly, and you'll be just fine. All right, I have the crash sensor fixed, both airbags installed, both seat belts installed, everything's plugged in and hooked up. The last thing to do is reinstall uh, my SRS module. That goes in the center console. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Two bolts on this side, one bolt on the driver's side, plug it in, and then it's time to hook the battery back up and see if it's all working right. It's a little bit later and um, got everything hooked up, got everything plugged in, car turned back on, and wouldn't you know it, I still have an airbag light. But I hooked up my diagnostic tool and, whoa, camera one can't see it. I get this code and I've done a little research. That code is for a sensor in the passenger seat. Um, it's probably a wiring issue based on the research I've done, uh, but it is dark and late and cold, so I am going to have to uh, stop for tonight, but the good news is all of the uh, Codes that were there before for the blown airbags and seat belts and the crash data and all that is gone All right, it's getting dark and very cold out here. So I'm gonna have to cut it off here for tonight It's kind of a bummer to not have that uh, airbag light taken care of yet uh, But all of the things that we were trying to fix before all the things I knew about uh, Have been taken care of those codes are gone so that's a plus. Um, next time I'm able to get into the car, I'll figure out what's going on um, underneath this passenger seat. From the research I've done, it looks like it's probably uh, a loose plug or possibly even um, pinched wiring or something like that uh, in the seat sensor, the occupant sensor in the passenger seat. So I'll get that figured out, but um, I'm going to have to cut it off here for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey as I rebuild my first Copart salvage car. I appreciate all of you who have joined me. I am blown away 
away by the response and all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much. If you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, why don't you go ahead and do that now? I'd really appreciate it. And you can also go ahead and hit that bell icon, then you'll get notified anytime I upload a new video. In the next episode, I'll be figuring out what's going on with the wiring under this passenger seat, and then I'm gonna go ahead and also get all the front body panels, the bumper and the fenders put on, get everything test fitted um, and prepped for paint. Uh, that's the next step. This car is getting close to done. I'm also looking for my next rebuild project, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this pretty close to when I upload it, I hope you have a great Super Bowl weekend. Catch you in the next episode. Oh, 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 oh,